Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy Nando, part of Bells and Whistle Sport. You're about to watch an exclusive interview or podcast from one of the guys or yours truly. But first things first, this video is in association of IQ Boxing and Safer Training Solution and also Dirty South Boxing. If you want to look and feel like a champion, head over to dirtysouthboxing.co.uk for the best boxing wear and boxing equipment. Also, use our promo code BMW20 for 20% off your order. Enjoy the show. How you doing, champ? I'm good, bro. What's happening? But I can't hear you. One sec. Let me see if I can fix that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. How you doing? I'm good, bro. Not too bad. How's it going? Yeah, all good, man. I just want to say thank you for taking your time to speak to us today. Right, man. Of course, any time, bro. Um, big fan of yours. I wanted to speak to you, obviously, um, about comeback um i was so happy to hear when you were making a comeback um after 16 months of injury i want to know how did it feel that um in your progression of coming back the first fight was going to be on sky box office on the dillian white undercards did you imagine that being your comeback fight uh no remember my, my comeback fight was supposed to be on the josh kelly david avenician card so um, I wanted to make a statement there because there was two other waterweights fighting on the same card. But obviously the pandemic happened and we was all in lockdown. But um, yeah, but apart from that, when, when that got announced as well, I was still happy. I was just happy to just to get back in there. Um, the main thing for me was, was, was to get the win because I've been out for so long. It weren't really about... If I'm honest, it wasn't really about making statements, but it was at the same time. So it was a bit of both. But the main thing is I got the win and I've done it in a good fashion. So I did make quite of a statement. Yeah, you caught the eye of a lot of people. Um, anyone who was watching before the the event that didn't know who Chris Congo was, they're 100% who are now, bro, because you made a big statement. I want to know, um, obviously, you're fighting in front of crowds how did it what was it like being in a in an arena well a garden that had no crowd and you can hear both coaches screaming both your teams um like screaming at the top of their heads and you can like literally hear a pin drop it was all right for me i'm a listener in it so whatever my coach says i do straight away i'm like a ro i turn into a robot when i'm in the ring so for me it was all right man it wasn't like i wasn't really too too phased by it, you know. For if, if anything, it was it sort of worked in my favour because I am boxing in front of a crowd for a long time. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. To some sort of extent, it worked in my favour. There was no crowd. I was nervous, but I probably would have been even more nervous if there was a big crowd. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I got the job done. You did. You said um, it wouldn't go the distance. You kept your words. Did you believe going to stop him or was it more to get into his head um i believe that i would have stopped him you know um like i said i'm a, i'm more of a boxer puncher he's a come forward brawler puncher so it doesn't matter how how many times he, he's 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 best asset is coming forward my best asset is boxing on the back foot and countering so one of the punches was the majority of my punches were landing and it only took a few to actually hurt him. And I, I, like I said before, he's going to walk onto something. And he did. And you got the job done, obviously, in the WBO Global World Weight title. Um, how did you all get, get in that strap? Right, I felt good, man. First strap is all, all, always the best feeling. So, yeah, I was, I was excited, man. I was buzzing for a couple of days. First of many, many. Of course. 
<laughs> um, first time I ever saw you fight was against uh, William uh, Warburton. That was on the Eubank Abraham undercard. I remember I went to that event and um, I was with someone, I was with Jermaine, my colleague, and I was with someone else and he told me, yo, you need to see this guy, man, Chris Congo, you need to see him fight. So, and after that, me and Jermaine both said it, man. This guy has got talent, and you know what? Future world champ. 100%. Since that fight, what have you learned, and how have you improved since that fight? Um, I've learned, I've learned a lot, man. Like, like I said, I've done rounds with, with a lot of experienced fighters within that time, so I'd learned a lot, um, and just learning how to mix it up, not just boxing, but fighting and. You know, just loads of things that we, we work on in gym, even even down to the basics. Sometimes we just literally work on just a jab, which is which is a basic thing, but it's it's so powerful in, in, in boxing. So yeah, I, we do a lot of things in the gym. Amazing. Um, this year you signed with Dillian White. Um, I want to know. Obviously, you're both from South London, like myself. How um how did that come about? Uh, that was easy. Um, like I said, we're both from South. We were training at the same gym at the time, Miguel's. And he, he said, he literally just asked me the question, what's going on? How come you're not fighting? And then he wanted to, to get involved. So it's easy, 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 easy work, man. So what can I say? Amazing. But being signed with Dillian White, I want to know is, what's it like being part of an amazing stable? Because you got... Fabio Woody, you got uh, Babich, Richard Riatpour, um, and then you got um, his trainer as well, who's got IQ Boxing. You got Yuzi Mare, you got uh, John Harden Jr., K Prosper. What's it like um, combining those two stables together and being around those type of uh, caliber of fighters? It's just great because we always push each other. When, when, like, when I was in Portugal, we was always pushing each other, helping each other out. So. It's always good, man. You know, I'm always doing rounds with, with Kay as well. Um, always doing rounds with John Harden. So, yeah, man, it, it, it pushes us on. We push each other, you know. You mentioned um, <clears throat> you've uh, sparred with experienced fighters. I want to mention a few names to you. Um, I want to get your intake things. Obviously, the first name I want to mention is Conor Ben. Obviously... Um, there's been a few words said between you two. There's the infamous sparring story. How did that, how did that come about? Ben and Ben instead of Chris Jenkins. Was there any contact from the Ben camp regarding you fighting him instead of uh, Formella? Uh, no, we we originally knew that he was supposed to fight um, Chris Jenkins, so we didn't have anything like we didn't really focus on it but I, I said to my management team I said if that comes about we can take it because all I wanted was the one fight to get me back in there you know knowing how it feels the smaller gloves and everything that's all I needed you know just that one fight so I said if it does come to that stage let's do it you know um but yeah what what my management or team were trying to do as well is get me to fight for the British so um yeah, when when uh, Conor Ben withdrew from the thingy, they they originally said that I can't fight for the British straight away because Echo's in line for it next, so he has to fight, and I fight the man the, the, the for the final eliminator against Liam Taylor. How I want to know is how did the this infamous story come about? Because you guys used to be cool, right? So how did it come about? Like afterwards, and it turned sour. I mean, we're still cool now. I don't like. I said I don't have any problems with the guy. I don't have any problems with anyone. I just want to fight. You know what I mean? Everybody's talking about him. Then if everyone's talking about him, then let's make the fight happen. He, if he believes he's the best world away in the country, then let's go because I know I'm the best world away in the country. I know this, so let's make it happen. You know, it doesn't have to be. It's, certain fights not always bad blood. I don't like. I don't hate the guy. The guy's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. But it's only right to give the fans what they demand. You know, the fans want to see this fight. I get people stopping me on the street asking me when are you and Conor Ben gonna fight. So let's make it happen. 
I think a lot of people um, want to see this fight because obviously there's been some words said. So, like you said, you ain't got nothing, but people feel like there is a little bit of bad blood there. Um, obviously, because of the sparring story, but also because Ben, um, he literally likes to brawl in the ring, and mm -hmm. you both can box and can can fight at the same time. So I think it will be a slugfest, and it'll be a great fight. Yeah, definitely, I believe so too. The other, another name I want um, because um, I saw an interview with yourself when you first signed with Dillian White, and name mentioned straight away was Josh Kelly. Now, obviously, you and Kelly got a bit of history there. Is he, in your mind, like one of like the top targets that you want to fight? I mean, someone that you want to eventually have a big showdown with, maybe a title on the line? 100%. 100%. I believe that would be a good fight as well. Um, like I said, I would love to avenge the loss, which I will sometime. So um, I don't know what he's doing. He's gone kind of quiet. So we don't know where he's gone. If he's training, is he training? I don't know. No, I don't. I, I, we, we, we have no idea. The last tweet um, I see was that he's therefore fighting a Vissian at the end of the year. I mean, the end of the year is coming now. So is the fight happening? We don't know. A Vissian said he don't want it next year. He want it now. So he's training. Is he training? I don't know. I don't. He doesn't post anything on his um on his Instagram anymore, so no one knows. Um, there's a few events coming up. I don't think um it, by the end of the year he's going to be the main event like he was meant to in March. He could get a chance maybe to be on the undercard for um Billy Joe Saunders Murray or um even AJ Kulak. Probably. Um, I hope so. I would like to see that fight. It's a good fight. I want to know um your opinion on his performance in the Garden. Um, on the AJ the Ruiz on the card because a lot feel like he that's the night where he got exposed and a lot feel like he actually lost that fight um, because before that he used to try to um, how you put it try to be some next Nassim with his showboating and the way he moves mm -hmm. um, you feel like his opponent exposed him that night and he lost the fight um I don't think he exposed him. I'll say that he, he managed to, um, they must have had a game plan going in to the fight. So the game plan that he had for that fight, it worked. You know what I mean? It was to put the pressure on him and throw, throw punches. And, you know, he likes to do this Nazim Hamid style sort of thing. But just remember, you can't do that with every single person you fight. You can't do that. Even 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 looking at the best fighters of our era, people like Floyd, it's not every time Floyd box someone with with the with the with the Philly shell. You see him sometimes. He had his high guard up, you know. So you need to learn how to adapt in in, in fights like that. So people say he was exposed. I, I thought he lost the fight. To be honest, I thought it was really close, but it's in America. You can't get a close fight with an American in his hometown. It just don't work. It don't work like that. So I understand for the draw. I understand it. So if he lost, I wouldn't have been surprised. But the draw is is, is, is good enough. He should be happy with that. Yeah, 100%. I want to know, out of the two, the two fighters, what do you see the weakness in, in Josh Kelly and Conor Do you believe you can beat them? Um, usually I like to keep them things to myself because I know what I like to work on, you know what I mean? I know what I can bring out. And there's even certain is certain things that um, what what I done, what, what I didn't do in in the fight with, with Luther Clay that I know I could probably capitalise on and use that with Josh Kelly or against Conor Ben. So that's something I like to keep to myself. But trust me. Watch this space and tune into the next fight. Hundred percent, I got a plan for them. Perfect. There was um, there was another guy I wanted to mention to you. Know, like you spoke about it the other day with uh, Tunde and um, uh, Spencer Firin and Tunde doing a great job with their with their show. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> when I saw the fight, him fight, and um, straight away I, I text Javier Miller. 
um, and straight away said, I would love this guy to fight um, Congo because I think it will be an amazing fight. After the fight, he called you out and he can spend a fear and push for the fight. Um, and that's Mikey Mackinson. First of all, what do you think of this guy, 19-0? What do you think of his boxing skills and his record so far? Uh, listen, he's, he's, he hasn't lost, you know. So he's a good fighter. Um, he's a tasty fight. I won that fight. I've wanted that fight for a long time. I've said it on the show. I wanted it for a long time. He wasn't interested. He was talking about Terrence Crawford and, and, and all the guys in the world rankings. So... Now this pandemic has happened, you see how the tables turn. I've got to a decent stage in my career now, just off one win. So, and now he wants to fight me. But I've been on him for a long time. Do you get what I'm saying? But I, I said it already, I believe I win the fight. I believe I win the fight. I'm the bigger man. I'm definitely the, the stronger man. And I believe I've got the skills to do Every, if you look at everyone he fights, they do the same thing. Like no one, no one changes anything. They put pressure on him, but they don't know how to put pressure on him. They don't know what type of. Like, trust me, I know I got him, hundred percent. Do you think that fight can go the distance? Mm -mm, mm -mm. It, it can't. And and if you look at him as well, certain times as well, his hands is too low. He's not. He's not. A, he's not an upright boxer like this. He's more of his hands low. Does what he needs to do. You know. You don't see him with his hands up. So that's what I'm saying. Listen. If he if he gets hit, he's gonna get hurt. I promise you that. And you know what? Funny enough, he got hit by that guy. I was watching it up to the fifth round, and I turned it off. He got the. He hurt the guy, so he dropped the man and didn't finish him. And what happened? Is the guy came back and threw a big left hook, and I know he felt that. And if that was one of my left hooks, he's definitely going down, 100%. I think that would be a big fight as well, because he's got the, um, I can't remember if it's the WBC or the WBA, but one of them, and he's got the silver belt. And having that, it could push for a mandatory world title fight. Mm -hmm. Do you, is, is that, do you see that as a bigger fight at the moment, then Conor Ben and um, who's fighting for the British title or Josh Kelly, for instance, even though that's those are big domestic fights, those at the moment you could call it maybe bigger names. Do you think maybe um, Mikey Mackinson is the one that push you for that world title fight? Well, I think everyone's sort of on the same level now. We're in, we're in this pandemic where, um, it's, it's mainly everyone's trying to get big domestic fights. So I think everyone's sort of on the same um, level of playing field at the moment. So if I box Mikey, I think it, it will probably be the same level as boxing Josh Kelly. I think Conor Ben has just got the name, so it, it gives it the edge. Yeah. But I believe, for me, it's all the same thing as a British-level fight. It can push us on. Everyone's in us. Everyone... Uh, all of us are in some sort of world rankings. So it's all going to push us up anyway. So it don't matter. Amazing. Chris, before I let you go, I want I want you to tell the, the, the fans what are the future goals of Chris Congo? What is the goal for 2021 and onwards? The goal is just to push on to the world level. If I can get the British title, I get a British title. If not, we're going to move on <laughs> from there and just keep building, man, until we get to that world stage and it's coming. Amazing. Our curiosity, who would be your dream opponent? Right now? Right now. If you were ready and you, you fight for a world title, who would you want to fight? Who would I want to fight? You know what? I would like to fight someone like... I would like to... Uh, people think I'm mad, but I'll go for the probably the hardest guy, which is probably Terence Crawford. I think he's the hardest challenger right now, so I would love to fight him. Yeah, he's he can hit, but mostly his boxing skills are out of this world as well. It's, 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 um, the one, if I if I could pick an opponent for you, be um, people think I'm mad as well. Is Errol Spence because you're both big punchers, 
mm-hmm. and you know what someone's going down in that fight. And the thing is, it'll mm-hmm. be a slugfest as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but you both can box at the same time. So for me, that would be an either one, Crawford or um, or Errol Spence, any of them, Sean Poirier, Danny Garcia, anyone you fight will be an amazing fight at that world at that world level. Definitely, I believe so. Well, they've been put on notice now, champ. <laughs> of course, they're, they're, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, <laughs> Chris, thank you for taking your time to um, speak to us. I hope um, after all this epidemic is over we can meet up uh with dillian and everyone uh iq boxing as well and uh we can get uh, another interview no problem of course we will do that stay safe nice one bro cheers take care